Hi, so I'm going to talk to you about widget testing in Flutter. Widget testing is definitely something that's a little bit overlooked in the Flutter community. Uh, there's a lot of coverage of unit testing out there and you can read a lot of stuff about unit tests and watch tutorials on it, but there's not so much about widget testing. And I think that widget testing is probably one of the best features of Flutter because it allows you to test your UI. Uh, but the thing that I like the most about Flutter widget testing is that you can test your UI without necessarily getting tangled up in the structure of your code. So if you have an existing app and it has a particular structure and you want to refactor your code, that won't necessarily change the tests. Because when you're testing your app with widget tests, you are doing things like clicking on the UI, typing, in the same way that the user would use the app. You're not worried about the internal structure of the app. So this tutorial is just going to focus on how we can refactor an app without necessarily changing the widget tests underneath. Okay, so just starting with the typical Flutter demo app. Uh, this is just the, the counter sample. So right here, what we're going to do is refactor this to use a qubit instead of a stateful widget. So right here, my homepage is a stateful widget. We're going to turn this into a stateless widget with a qubit. So first of all, I'm going to install the block package. Okay, block has the qubit class. And I've just copied an example of the qubit implementation uh, from the block pub deb documentation page. So that slots in nicely with our current app, right? So right now, I'm going to change this from a stateful to a stateless widget. Okay. Uh, so we can get rid of this counter here, right? And we'll get rid of this increment counter method. And we will pass in Counter qubit. Okay. Pass that in from the top. Okay, that's great. And we'll create an instance of that here. Okay, what's it saying? Okay, we can't use const in this case. Let's get rid of that. So we've passed in a counter qubit. Now, before before I go any further, we hear about widget tests. So if we take a look at the, the existing widget test, okay, what the test is doing is it opens the app, uh, expects to find text of zero, and it finds one widget. Right? And there should be no widget with a text of one. All right? Then we tap on the add button and we should find the opposite to be true. We should find that there's no widget with a text of zero and we should find a widget with the text of one. Right? So basically, if this test runs after we finish refactoring, then we've been successful. We've been able to create an app um, refactor that app and the test remains uh, with the same UI over time without any refactoring to the test. So if we get get back to the code here, okay we're gonna see some red points alright so first of all we don't need this anymore because we've merged these okay this is where we used to have our counter um, member and this used to be our method but instead of that, we can call increment on the qubit. Okay, so that, that will call increment on the qubit. The qubit should then um, emit something on the state, and that should refresh our screen. Okay, so right here, uh, the next thing we need to do 
is we need to put a builder in front of our scaffold. So we can use a stream builder to listen to the state changes. Okay, so what that does is when the qubit itself emits a state change, it tells the stream builder to rebuild the screen. It's much like set state. Now, there's a few other things we need to do for the stream builder. Okay, so the stream builder itself, we need to tell it to listen to a stream. Okay, so we specify the stream like this. Okay, and we need to specify an initial value. Okay, now if we run that, we should be able to see it working. Okay, so that worked. Now, if we stop that, we should be able to run the test. And we get a green tick. So what that tells us is that the original test that came with the sample app is still working even though we've refactored the code. That's really important and that's the point of what I'm trying to get across here is that if you've got a big app with lots of complex stuff going on, you want to be able to refactor your code regularly. You want to be able to restructure that. You want tests that prove that your app still works after you do the refactor, but you don't want to have to go and refactor the tests every single time that you make a change. Widget tests will help you with that.